I want to talk about my favorite pot-smoking, left-handed gay Jew, Barney Frank. He was on Real Time with Bill Maher uh, this past Friday, and he sort of came out of the closet in a new way. Okay, uh, Barney Frank, do you feel more liberated being out of Congress? Oh, you must. Oh, absolutely. I, I don't have to worry that when the phone rings, it's somebody who's screwed something up and says right. it's my responsibility to unscrew it. Although you, you know, you were in a fairly safe district. You were not one of those Congress people who have to worry about every little thing. You could come on this show and sit next to a pot-smoking atheist and it wouldn't bother you. And oh, I, which pot-smoking atheist were you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, you are liberated. Woo. No, I... I, uh, I will tell you now, I, I regret I had asked my governor to appoint me to a yes, like, Senate seat. I he wish decided they had. not to. And I was looking forward to having my husband, Jim, hold the Constitution, not the Bible, and affirm, not swear, that I was going to be right. a wonderful senator. You would have been a wonderful senator. And man, you, you and Elizabeth Warren both there, that would have been quite a team. Well, we can only dream. All right, there's so much greatness there, like talking about rationality and sanity, but what I think is fascinating about this is Barney Frank has been out as gay for like 25 years or something, yet couldn't come out as an atheist until he was out of Congress. I know this is right in your uh, wheelhouse, so I'm gonna start with you on this one. Is that, is that the crazy part of this, that he couldn't say this? 10 years ago felt that it would have been politically risky or whatever? Well, yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't say that it's crazy because I think that we're so used to this at this point, but this is what I think a lot of atheist kind of rights groups are really pushing towards. You know, I talk a lot about atheist issues and people always ask me like, <sighs> Why are you trying to convert everybody? Or I should say deconvert, because atheism <laughs> is not a religion, as we know. Right. But I, I, you know, deprogram, or deprogram, yeah. yeah. But you know what? It's not about that for me. I don't care what religion you are. That doesn't interest me. Really, what it's about is is forwarding atheist rights, and we're we're still a group of people who, yeah can't get elected to public office if we're out about our um, about our lack of religious affiliation. And so this doesn't surprise me, but it's, I mean, it's good to see him come out. I'm really proud of Barney for being able to do that. Yeah. He came out in a very safe space, let's be real. <laughs> and he right. came out, you know, if he had done it while he was in office, I think it might have been more impactful for the for the cause or for the movement, but I'm not going to, to denigrate him because I think that it's great that he did it anyway. And yeah. he's already had to deal, like you said, with the burden of coming out early. It, I mean, 20 years, that's a long time. Where he stands with his atheism now is probably where he did stand with his homosexuality 20 years ago, because back then it was not easy. It's still not easy right. to get elected if you're an out um, politician. Yeah, well, that's why I think it's just such a great metaphor. Max, I don't know where you uh, stand in terms no, of me, religion. We, or I mean, we're good friends, and we that's yeah. one of the issues that we both are totally in alignment on. <laughs> I mean, I think we need more atheists in Congress for sure. You yeah. Know? Uh, I think it's great. It's sad that, that he has to sort of have this big, you know, dramatic unveiling of his lack of a belief system. You know, I think, I think yeah. more of us. But is it lack of a belief system? It actually, to me, it shows a belief system of a higher order, actually, at least in the public sphere, because by saying, well, I wanted to uh, put my hand on the Constitution, not on the Bible, well, this country is run, I'm pretty sure, by the Constitution, or it used to be a little bit, right? For sure. I mean, yeah. I, don't, I wouldn't call that a belief, though. I think it, that, you know, most people who are public officials want to uphold the Constitution. I think that that's probably, like, the number one platform that everybody runs on. Right. But I don't know. I mean, I, I, I get concerned when people talk about atheism as a belief system or as a religion, because it really is, a you know, like they always say, <laughs> atheism is a religion, like bald is a hair color. <laughs> right? it's, it's not. It's no religion. It's irreligion. Yeah. It's not like a new church of atheism. Yeah. Do you think uh, that someone like Barney Frank is going to be given a longer leash on this now? Because by being gay, it's like, oh, well, we already think you're this like radical left-wing <laughs> gay liberal Massachusetts. Do you think that this sort of will make this easier? And uh, you know, he is also out of the, the public eye a little bit now. The guy, I mean, he's, he, he seems awesome. Like, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> He was, he was super hard on that Occupy Wall Street girl on the show. Yes. If you watched it, he was yeah, like yeah, yeah. he was relentless on her. I kind of felt bad for her at a point. There were real parallels, I think, between Real Time this Friday and Newsroom this Sunday with the Occupy girl going on live television. And oh, even I though she Newsroom, but she really no. held her own on Real Time, like much more than the character on Newsroom did. But yeah. Uh, but yeah, he was pretty tough on her when it came to the comments she was making about police and in lower income neighborhoods. But aside from that, I think that um, what you were just asking about 
you know, he's gay and liberal like and, you know, think atheist. anything. No. I think he's that already, already dudes, right? ultra, <laughs> ultra religious conservatives yeah. lump all that in together anyway. I think they see all of those traits as being, you know, traits of the devil. And yeah. so I don't think they're going to be that surprised either. Yeah. They're just going to see that, like, maybe somehow the democratic process is being taken away bit by bit right. now that we have atheists in office. So if it is traits of the devil, I like that. Now, I'm guessing you two are more than ready to vote for someone with traits of the devil. Do you think America is ready to vote for someone that just says, you know what, I'm an atheist, or at least I'm agnostic. We don't even have someone that e even is saying that. Yeah. I'm agnostic, I you know, make my decisions based on my own rationality and all that. Yeah, I mean, I like to think that America is definitely ready, you know, but I obviously, you know, I live in California and I spend a lot of time in New York. Um, but one of these pot smoking yeah. liberal hippies. No, but, but you know what, it is the fastest growing um, minority is people who don't identify with any particular religion. Yeah. So I think we're close to like, 16% now, which, which is, is a really huge. big That's number. Badass. It's a really big number. Um, but that includes people who are atheist, agnostic, or just say, you know, no comment, I don't identify specifically with any religion. Yeah. Um, that number, though, the 16%, that is that is so huge. Is that a problem, actually, within the atheist community, that there aren't sort of leaders, at least that I know about, that aren't pushing it in more of like a political fashion? I mean, I think it's a problem that we don't have political action committees. I think, well, we do, but but they're not large. I think it's a problem that we don't have lobbyists. But but it's not a problem in that we are, the whole point of not believing is that there is no organized atheist. You know, we have, we have American atheists. We have these different right. groups, but the Freedom the, from Religion Foundation. In a way. No more. <laughs> we have Bill Maher. Um, yeah. and, and Dawkins and, and people like that. I mean, we do have these organizations where a lot of people are getting more involved for political action specifically, but, but really it's about having like a secular alliance. It's about upholding the Constitution and maintaining a separation of church and state. I think yeah. that's what's the most important to those groups. It's not about, like we said before, deconverting or deprogramming anybody or bringing people over to the dark <laughs> atheist side. <laughs> right. I think it's more about ma making sure that our legislation is, is done in a secular way to, to kind of preserve what the Founding Fathers wanted when they yeah. first uh, set out to write the Constitution. All right, so, so here, here, exactly. <laughs> so final thought on this, because we've talked, about, we've talked a lot about atheism on the show, we've talked about a lot about pot on this show. Is there some connection, do you think? Or, and is there a little danger in the way he did this reveal by saying, I'm a pot-smoking atheist? Like, like connecting does, the two? Yeah. Um, I mean, I think that people that smoke tend to be more sort of, you know, open-minded and free associative and stuff like that, which might lend itself more to having alternate uh, spiritual beliefs or what have you. I don't know. I mean, I, I think uh, there shouldn't be a connection, but. I don't smoke pot. All right, well, <laughs> I, think, I think we can prove that there's at least one not pot smoking yep. atheist. There you go, America. <laughs>